Chun-Li Street Fighter the movie. Yeah, I always found the version of Chun-Li in Street Fighter the movie was an inferior drawing to the to some of the game art. Okay, so um, I'm just going to start with a silhouette of what I see. It's very symmetrical. So, okay, let's let me tackle this in a different way. There are so many different ways to tackling drawing. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to tackle this drawing like this. Okay, so I'm going to tackle this drawing um, like this. All right. So look. So, okay. Um, Aaron, Aaron, check this out. This is the Chun Li from Street Fighter the movie. Okay, there, there, there we go. Right. Okay, that's the breakdown done, people. There, there we go. Chun Li from Street Fighter the movie. Ah! <laughs> no, you'll see why I did that. Okay, I, I, I just like, I don't know. It's like now, now Aaron's back on the on the live streams. I like having a little bit of fun with him because, because I, it's Aaron's a safe bet for me because he laughs at my jokes. Um. <laughs> He's the only other person besides me that laughs at my jokes. Right. So I'll tell you why I did that. OK, not just to have a bit of fun. OK, not just to have a bit of fun and make Aaron laugh. Right. Um, what I see when I see is is the symmetry of this character is like this. And right on down onto the first one, actually gives me an idea of where her eye line is okay because that that's basically the silhouette of this what's up you know this character that got loads of uh young boys hearts going uh, and other bits going i guess when they were adolescents uh playing this game so you can see that it's not the world's most uh it's not the sexiest silhouette in the world can you see so um it's amazing really uh just what you find when you analyze the silhouette of these characters. But this is an interesting pose that I've picked because um, what it is, is it's an anime character that's showing a bit of character, like real character for a change rather than um, just an angry eyebrow, you know, which is I find, found it quite fun. Now, these actually go out to the side here. Like this. I'm going to make this original silhouette light pink so you can, well, even that's a bit strong. Let's make that a gray. So you can see the red, what I'm doing with it. Um, let me just see. I'll just check if I've still got an audience in case I lost my audience with my uh, over uh, comical behavior. Yeah, I've still got an audience. <laughs> there we go. Right. So, um, so, so in here is where we sit the face it's all about filling the negative space now what makes this an, another thing interesting about this character is the hairstyle so around the side okay i'm gonna do just under where this eye line is just under the eye line i'm gonna put another line like this okay and this is all gonna go on this side so she's got a load of hair on this side it's all about making playing this what i'm doing with you guys could be like a game of spot the difference from one side to to the other, which which is another way of doing a character breakdown and analysis to help you not just analyze a construction, but to help you cons uh, become better at uh, copying hand-eye coordination, which is kind of what we're doing here a little bit. Now, she has got angry eyes. So, again, this is kind of going into Dragon Ball territory here. So, her eyebrow shapes are kind of guiding the the character's um, uh, 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 personality and eye shape. So her eyes are going to sit in here. Now her eyes almost come really to the end of her to, to the end of her face on this side and they basically sit inside there. Uh, there is a gap but we're going to we're going to deal with that later. We're going to first flesh this out. Now she, I would say that it is about one eye width, but because we're playing squash and stretch with her eyes, um, we are doing, we are, it, it looks less than an eye width. But I would say that generally looking at this, she's got one eye width apart on that side. So we have something like this. Now the nose uh, is going to be kind of straight on this one side down here. And it is going to be exactly in line with, 
remember how I did these things on the side. So that's a good way for you to have your measuring uh, stick or your measure, measuring cylinder about where the nose goes. Now this is a nice mouth for an anime. Um, it's got three dimensional quality to it. So we're going to have like this kind of like little kind of um, shape like that. But then we're going to put some lips in here. We're going to put lips down there. While it's not the world's most sophisticated expression, I will say that um, it's a nice expression. It's a little bit different from uh, a lot of the anime that I have seen or I've been asked to break down. Uh, it's got a little bit more character to it. So good one, Dylan Draws. I do feel the drawing is, is less dynamic and appealing uh, of, of what, what, what she featured in the video games, some of the video games, but um, this was an interesting drawing. So now we're going to come in and make little bits of cheeks on the side. I'm not drawing the character in. I'm just drawing the shapes of the construction. So in line with the eyes at the top here, we're going to put her ears. Okay, so her ears is going to be very, very anatomical. Okay, so we'll talk about the anatomy later. But we're just going, her ears are kind of like end just halfway between, no, really just almost under her eye here, which is kind of, strange for the positioning of her ears really but that's the way it is and i'm going to kind of put a line there to ensure that they add up all right so that's the ear spacing on that side so now all this business of what i did with with this big shape around hair is going to make the hair very very easy you see how it's all blocked into a shape like that so let's first tackle this half of the hair okay so we're simply going to just from here go like one okay two and then the third one three like that and that's going to sort out that side and then here we're going to kind of just do do like two bits of hair all imagining that these hair is all being tied up in these kind of um i don't know what they are they look like rice buns on her head i've never really known what they what these cloths were um um, I didn't know that Chinese people did that. I do know that Indian people, so young people of the Sikh faith, uh, when you're young, they dye their hair with these kind of cloth. I didn't know that it was a Chinese thing as well. Right, so this, uh, this thing, I'm not going to spend too much time. We're just going to go one, two, okay. This, I think, is organic. There's not much construction involved in this. It just depends how, you know, how many they probably you know i don't know how many the model has and then from there we get we can then just draw a straight line but then they add it and change it which we'll do when we draw on top okay and there's we've got one of these coming out on the other side so what we want to do is we want to imagine the line going all the way through like that and imagine that coming on the other side up there like that and there's a little bit of that going on here one I can see one two there's two of them going on up there like that so you see now you're gonna see how this is all gonna add up first to make life easy let's tackle now the hair on this side so we're gonna come down there like that now in this space that I've put this is what we're gonna do we're gonna come up from this center line here right and we're going to draw a straight line and we're going to come down and that's going to be our first fold of hair okay you can see how easy this is going to be right then there's going to be there's going to be all together one two three four three big strands this is how to break this down i'm not counting all the strands in the the space between her ear and her eye okay let's draw it there's going to be one hair, one big one here, all right? It's going to be one big one here, okay? Then there's going to be another one covering this portion of the eye, too, like that, right? And then after covering this portion of the eye, just get the width right, there's going to be one coming all the way just in front of the eye, okay? Like this. So there's three major strands of hair and this one comes all the way down to the nose. This one comes in line with the nose. 
So you can see the complexity can be really simplified. And then within the three, we're then going to put in other little ones. So there's one between there and there like that. And there's one between here and here like this. Okay. So that's basically what we have. This is probably comes a little bit more in, but I'll go over, I, you know, that, that, that I'll just refine when I draw on top. I'm just breaking down. Then on the side where this line continues, we're going to have another one coming out here like this and another one just coming out here like that. And that's how we get all those so-called complicated lines on her eyes uh, sorted out. Then we're, I'm going to kind of just go in here and put this eye shape in here like this. She's kind of like cross-eyed. She's got a bit of Dragon Ball Z going on here. If I knew the Dragon Ball theme music, I'd start singing it. Uh, but I don't. Uh, never really watched the show. Uh, the whole thing of two people jumping in the air and then flashing their arms forwards and backwards to be rapid punches for half an hour just never really appealed to me didn't seem like a good way to spend my time right so um now along the side where we had remember that first initial shape that i drew that's where we're going to start putting in these things so this one is it's going to be a lot wider than i originally did but it's the same theory we're going to have one out here like this all right and then this one is going to come straight down from out here and then up here like this. So it's the kind of just the same kind of thing. And I'm not going to draw in too much detail because I'll save that for the next round. So here we're going to, I'm just going to like make a triangle like this and bring that here. And I'm going to divide that in half. I'll just give you a little code about how to do this. Okay. So that's that sorted out. Okay. It's We don't individually get caught up. If you individually get caught up, you're going to get lost and you're going to lose your accuracy. So how do we do it? So just along here like this, we're going to just draw a triangle coming out here like this, right? Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to divide that in the center like that. And then we're going to kind of do this continuation line at the bottom. You see how easy that is? Little animation tricks. Okay. But all I do on these videos is talk to people on Facebook and check and then you know scribble around he doesn't do anything i don't learn anything from his his videos you know he's on youtube people are watching him you know. <laughs> oh dear right okay so now around here we're going to do a little bit of a circle right and then in that circle we're going to put a triangle like this and then we're going to draw a joining line in the middle now from here we're just going to create like a little kind of separation you could like put line here and then that creates the 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 color effect you see how easy these things are when you know how and you don't get caught up in like the colors um like that so that's how that i'm kind of drawing the character in already really so i shouldn't be because it's just so easy the construction of this is so simple that um that it's literally just tempting to just start drawing the character on top and just fire away with it which i've got to refrain because i've got to i've got to then just kind of show you that okay so i'm going to delete the that so you can kind of see that's the kind of the character anyway but let's fill it in let's tidy up the, some of that hair so so you can get to see um uh the character as she should look so let's fatten my brush up. Let's bring it to about a 14 and let's go in here. Now the eyes. Okay. So the eyes is going to, the eyes is always a thing that I like to start with. So we're going to come here like this. Now she's got a little bit of strand of hair on that eye. So I don't know. So I'm going to start with a super oval shape like this and I'm going to bring it harsh with a line for her cheek. Okay. Which is going to come here. And then I'm going to draw the eyeball in like that. And then she's got big kind of, um, uh, there's, there's no iris or anything here. It's just completely black, which is interesting. And she's got two little lashes on the side here. This is an interesting anime eye shape, actually. She's got a, um, a lash hair like this. 
and then it's super super big kind of space on there and I'll go and fill that in in a minute but first I just want you to see what it looks like as a shape because without drawing that in so you can really get the get the feel and then I'm gonna rub out I'm gonna have to rub out some of these eyebrows later but I want you to see the process because this hair strand does cover it so that comes in here okay so that's that's the the shape of that eye on there like that you know it's quite simple and then we're gonna put nice little kind of uh, furrow lines on her uh, there's a little bit of shape of shadow hair she's got a furrow on this brow here before we come into this uh, doing this eye so now this eye um, is interesting because we have the same shape happening on the other side so we've literally got uh, a symmetrical style shape on the other side so it's going to be curved like this and super super straight in line with the other one but then as we're coming up here, we can see a little bit more detail here. We've got like a little bit more kind of lashes on this side. There's a bit of a separation. I'm going to show you that. It's a bit of a separation here like this where they've got the white of the eye. Then we've got one lash up there like that. And then we've got this big kind of eyelash on this side here like that. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to give her this super big top lash and a little bit of lashes on there to be seen on hair like that now on this side as well we can just about see it through all those hair strands which I just missed so I was brought to my attention by the lid on this side so there's enough anatomy in her eye to see that we see a bit of that lid continuing on this side all the way down here like this and like this which is a little bit different to what it is with the other eye but then that other eye is covered with lots of hair. So then the eyeball comes in here with the white of the eye and the small kind of little eye. Now I'm going to compare the sides. Now it is true, so I'm going to leave it. I'm tempted to change it because it's hurting my eyes looking at it. Uh, this eyeball is significantly bigger than this eyeball, even in the, uh, in the sketch that I'm in the drawing animation frame that I'm looking at. Maybe that's just the, the way the... The, the animator did it for animation, anime expressions. I personally don't like it. I think it looks odd. It's actually physically hurting my eye. I'm feeling my eye is bigger. When I draw, I have this oneness with what I'm drawing. So it really is, it's really, I'm feeling pain in my eye as I'm looking at that. So, but that's, we're going to leave that, right? So then around here, we're going to have this squinting on this side what I like is what's what's interesting what I've learned here about anime expression which I do like because I would have never like we've got kind of like this almost this crosshair thing happening which I might if I ever draw my own sort of anime characters I don't know I don't have don't think I will but if I ever do get an inkling to do my own kind of anime style because I'm as, as I'm doing these breakdowns, I must admit I'm getting a little bit more open and a little bit more taste. You guys are converting AMB a little bit to the anime. I've always liked anime, but more so the anime video game styles like Samurai Showdown. But I've never felt that I want to draw like that. But you guys are kind of converting me a little bit with all these breakdowns. So, um, you know, if I ever did, that's a little tip that I, I think I'll keep for myself. So the nose is just coming down the side like that. Nothing much for me to talk about there. There is a shape of shadow that is practically black. So I'm just going to black that in while I'm doing that. Right. I'm going to draw the mouth and then we're going to tackle. We're going to quickly color in those eyes and then tackle in the rest. So the mouth is as I drew it. So fitting in line, just, just kind of parallel to this nose. Okay. We've got the mouth, which is just slanting down like that. And we're going to come down off it and we're going to put a little bit of a lip on there and a little bit of an upper lip and there is some shading on that mouth but we're going to leave that now i think that's an interesting expression i like it for it's different i don't you know there are animes that make these kind of expressions but um a lot of animes i mean they, it has the di my problem with them is they're not very sincere Okay, you can't do high drama with an expression like this. You, you, there'll be no Prince of Egypt 
with this kind of expression you know if if you if you want to know if you catch my drift right so then this this eyelash i'm just going to block that in like that and what's going to happen is is um as i do the hair strands maybe off stream um i'll rub it away uh but it doesn't really need to be rubbed away because it's just aesthetics and we're more interested in seeing what goes behind it okay again this eye is slightly longer than this eye i can already see that and i'm looking at the drawing and that's what it is so i'm not going to tamper with that um so let's just very quickly block in this okay and i'll block in this like this i'm gonna fatten my brush to tackle that so it's important to see it as it is because that's how we see the eyes uh, the, the 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 actual blocking in of the eyes is worth worth it because you get to see the character as it's supposed to look okay so that's pretty much that and what i am going to do is i'm just going to get my eraser here to make this a nicer round this a nicer round there we go so there there you can see the eye shapes coming out of that and she has these little cheek uh things and then hair what she's got is she's also got this kind of little kind of i've never understood these little kind of hairline i would kind of rushed those a little bit these little kind of hairline hatching shades okay so now basically everything is kind of as i drew it so the bit in the center line okay the hair is going to come down like this and then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of put a little kind of like i'm not going to copy it exact but we have this kind of thing to keep the hair texture uh kind of interesting which is nice okay that's nice so we just have these kind of things and then as we come down to the sides we make them a little bit bigger like that okay so that's just the way you just refine on top it gives you a little bit more definition and depth now what we have around here is a slight subtle in and out job of the cheeks okay not too much it's got it's quite square in the head I'm not going to be too clean with my drawing because I need to speed up and get on with the review. So I'm just going to just going to kind of fudge these lines on the side. Let's tidy it up just a little bit. Now I'm going to do the same on this side very quickly. Go. So I'm just literally drawing over my construction shape that I made. So there's nothing really much to explain about that other than making sure that the i've got the drawing rotated at the moment but i will make sure when i flip it round do does it add up you see it doesn't quite add up as because i've just rotated it so this has to be kind of more symmetrical to this so when you're doing these kind of drawings that are so 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 symmetrical now i know that i can turn this around and do that you need to be make sure that because this it's the simplicity that makes these drawings what they are right so now the ear as i mentioned is is this outer shape coming up and away from her it's actually a little bit further out on according to my construction as well so now what, what we're going to do is we're going to put anatomy in here we're gonna we said it was just a shape like that which it is but we're going to put a little dink in there and then we're going to come out right and then we're going to come in so the same shape and then she's got little stud studded earring here like this right so what is this this represents the outer helix and where that dink is is where the outer helix turns like this right and in here we have the anti helix okay and that is going to be the concha and the and no the cut's not the concha actually that's the um superior and inferior cruise of the ear okay so that comes around there like that so that outer inside helix could actually anti helix could actually be the concha as well so then we're gonna have that on the other side it's kind of completely obscured by the hair so i'm just gonna fudge it because i don't want to you know i don't want to spend too much time here so i'm just gonna the earrings have to line up that's all i'm thinking about do those earrings line up right 
Now, let's tackle this complicated hair. That's, that's the meat and potatoes of all of this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start with the first one, which comes in line with this, is going to go straight up, around, and the connection comes back to the middle, like that. You see? So that's how that works. And there's going to be a big load of shadow there to, to make that, um, you know, that, that would be shadowed in. Okay, which I'm not going to spend time shading this in. I'm going to leave this all in line uh, because it's just we need to press on. I think I'm giving you enough nice, good material here to copy and how to copy a Chun-Li and all that. So now this is going to be in line with the nose. It's actually physically touching the nose. So this is just going to come up. Okay, and then from the same line, it's actually going to come out and in like this. Okay, so we're going to come out and in and connect it to that like that so that's how that that's going there now this is where it's going to change up slightly a little bit different to my construction the way i did it but it's more or less the same idea we're going to come down as i'm observing into the eye and this one is just going to come and hang down from here like this and this is actually joined with this one which comes over the eye and it's a little bit uh, up it's a little bit mine's a little bit differently placed to the one on there because i'm working a little bit faster but it's more or less the same thing but then rather than going over my yellow construction what this does is this continues to go in line with there because it's all coming out of there it's all coming out of that then we've got the outer one coming on the outside of the face which comes on the outer ear, which comes down here like this. Now, as I look for that, I want this and this to kind of line up. So I'm going to bring this here, okay, rather than there. And I'm going to, you got it when you, as I said, when you do these, you really want to make sure what's the symmetry. What's the symmetry? That, that guarantees that you can make a pretty accurate representation of what it is you're trying to study or go from. Now, within the ear ring, Okay, this is going to come in and it's all coming in. It's all like there's a, there's a shading line here, okay? This is going to be darker this 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 one here, but it's all coming in. Shut up. It's all coming in like that. So this is going to come around, okay? And then this literally comes up and it's going to come in line with her head. The drawing is cut off here, but it's going to come in line with her head there so i know to bring that in line with her head and that's where that kind of stays now what happens on these ones on the outer two is they come rather they come away so it's slightly different to what i did but not too different what what we want to know is this is all the same okay so it starts here and it's going to come into here because it's growing out of there right it's going out of that bunch so it's going to be growing out of that bunch there like that right so we have this and then this one is going to curl over the side and they're all going to join in there like that right so that's basically that and then on there when that's colored in the ear will be there and that'll frame the head and then on here you have this which is all going to be shaded in okay so this is all shaded we're going to put these lines exactly kind of as i put them in okay because that's literally all that is and then we're going to have shapes of shadow coming in here and coming in here and you know these shapes are the shapes that are gonna it's all in the shading that makes the character look look more three-dimensional as you can see it's a very flat drawing now on this on this hair we're going to embellish these things that i did a little bit so we're going to come and we're going to i'm going to rush them i don't want to copy them exactly okay so we're going to come around here and put a little bit of inside and then there's going to be a little bit of an outside on there and then we're going to put a little bit so we're going to have some uh kind of uh dimension to these things so essentially i'm going over the line if you've forgotten how i did them that's what reversing the video will do 
you know so I'm just gonna go over the line and just go in here and start putting little creases and folds inside there to make it seem like it's the texture of what it's supposed to be cloth right so that's all it is or oh, half of what drawing is is taking the shape so for example we made this a triangle and I showed you how to construct it but now to give it a cloth like texture I'm gonna take the shape and I'm gonna go round like this okay and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna come quite hard but then again here as I come straight down okay I'm now gonna balance this hardness with a soft inside coming like this to make it feel like cloth okay like that and that's what it is so then here it's gonna be hard okay hard hard and then we're gonna kind of come out to make it feel soft and then we're gonna go against it to give it that cloth like feel okay that's all that there is to it so we we talked about how to construct these and we're literally I'm just gonna go over my construction lines with that kind of mentality okay um, the way that I'm pressing on the pencil or the pen uh, or the Wacom it really doesn't matter the software is not going to do it for you it will matter if you're drawing in Adobe animate which you know is just really nasty for drawing I don't recommend it if it's people tell me it's still like the flash line but if you have Toon Boom or TV Paint or you know open tunes or anything like that it shouldn't matter uh, or Krita so this again is the same on this side I can't really so I'm just gonna speed through this so we're gonna come down here like this here like this and we're gonna see a little bit of this all happening going through uh, the characters here which I'm kind of like just rushing it and fudging it a bit because I think the stream is now taking a little bit too long so I'm just gonna go in here and this is all hidden by this so well there's nothing here that's different to what I did on the other side like that but then again so what you can see as I'm making these shapes is as while I made that little bit of a joke at the beginning with Aaron AOX about that's the Chun Li guys okay there you go you can see that I was joking, but I was half joking. That really was the Chan Li. Okay, that really was. Okay, I'm a little bit off on that. I don't really care because it really doesn't matter. That really was what it took to what I saw when I saw this drawing. So when you go to make a copy, or I prefer to use the word a study, okay, there's if you're copying don't you know you're copying for a reason two reasons one reason there's nothing wrong with it you're copying because you like it you you know it makes you happy life is about feeling good you know um so um there's nothing wrong with just copying to feel good but if you're copying for the sake of um the other reason which is why are you copying you're trying to improve your art so why if you're improving your art are you copying a drawing like this rather than a learning anatomy or anything like that well because you can see and understand how they use line and shape uh, to convey a certain subject matter some people would call that style what's your style okay um, but then at the same time um, it's more a case of understanding how to sell the illusion so if you're copying you're gonna want to be analytical in your thought about what do you what's the first thing you see when you see the drawing don't say do I see eyes let me rephrase that what's the first shape you see when you see the drawing okay so there is our um, Chun Li okay um, character um, uh, so yeah Dylan draws that was a good suggestion uh, thanks for uh, suggesting that so um, AMB is the greatest 
archive anyone could ever ask for. You know, of all the books I've read, of all the other online tutorials I've seen, this was the missing key. Every video is like packed with this information that I would never be able to get anywhere else. So I would say this, this is the greatest resource for learning animation. For me, AMB Animation Library is hands down the best animation learning resource that I've seen. I've tried all the tutorials, I've gotten all the books, I've never been able to um, really grow until I found AMB. And it's incredible. I've only just begun it, but like I definitely am getting more from that than I did from my one and a half years of college. I've noticed definitely that my animation has improved a lot and it's more alive than ever. And what I also like about his animation training is that you also gain real confidence. Real Animator Training Library is unequivocally the best resource uh, for animation, 2D animation, traditional hand-drawn animation that I've seen. So I wholeheartedly recommend the AMB Real Animator Training Library to anybody who wants actual knowledge and actual applicable concepts uh, to create their own animation and to move forward in the field of animation and to set your work above those uh, that are just kind of teaching themselves and not learning these true, tried and true classic concepts. AMB is motivated by his students' successes and improvements. He's a great teacher, a great animator with over 20 years experience in the industry so you can't really get much better than that. I strongly recommend him to anybody. I'm thinking on how to put in words what I feel about it. I love that. It approached me from my dream of becoming an animator. Every cent I paid in there was worth it. I like that the library is structured. I can go back and watch it anytime I want to. And um, he's just got so much knowledge. And uh, I just highly recommend it to anyone who's out there looking to learn traditional 2D animation. And so thank you, MB, so much. And uh, thank you so much for like all you've done for me. <laughs> so, are you going to join the library?